This week on the Fresh Wave Podcast. We should be talking to God more because he's the only one who actually does know. Yeah. yeah. So good. <laughs> awesome. So that, good. See, so good. Yeah. Amen. So good. So good. Romans. So good. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fresh Wave podcast. This is season one, episode five. The Fresh Wave podcast is for youth, by youth. And Johnny. And Johnny. <laughs> Today, we have some very special guests on with us who are our friends, Christina and Shannon. What up, what up? Hey. <laughs> hey. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So Christina brought us a very good topic today. Would you like to share what that's all about? Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about patience. Um, I feel like it's a really important thing to be able to have like, you know, just throughout the day and like, especially when things get like stressful and um, I feel like it's always nice to, you know, turn to patience and yeah. Yeah, something that everyone has so naturally, right? <laughs> yeah. Patience in every <laughs> moment of every day. For sure. Mm -hmm. So we obviously live in a world that lacks patience in like every area of life. Uh, I mean, you just think about everything now is, you know, same day, like same day shipping. Like that's just crazy. Like I can go on Amazon and it's like, can be delivered later today if you order over $25 with these specific items. It's like, that's crazy. I can get it on my doorstep later that day. Uh, and then like other things as well, that's just like the speed of things is so quick and so fast because people don't want to wait anymore. So patience is, I think, a very good topic to bring to the table, to bring yeah. to the podcast, to bring for the listeners who will be listening. I'm sure they're saying, yes, I struggle with patience. I want stuff now or I don't like the unknown of what's to come and I don't have the patience to wait for it. So mm -hmm. great topic. It's going to be yeah. exciting. It's going to be a fun one to talk about, discuss. I can't wait. <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> I said that before. That was a rough joke. Yeah. Anyways, patience. Yeah, right? I can't wait to talk about this. Awesome. So we obviously need to if I can't wait. All right. So patience. Yeah. I feel like a good starting question for this topic is how is, I guess, where we live today or the environment that we live so impatient? Because you were starting to list examples like same day shipping. My question is, what are some other examples that we'd be like, oh yeah, that's great because it's fast. Like how, how is our culture so impatient recently? I think one that's like, you know, the stage of life you're in right now, for example, juniors, seniors in high school, they are waiting the next phase, whatever that is. You know, sometimes it's, it's military, it could be work, it could be school, it could be a gap year, whatever it is. And there's a lot of, I think, a lot of impatience on when that decision is made and how you know it. So let's say college is where you're going after you graduate. How patient are you waiting for that acceptance letter? <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not patient. patient. <laughs> when you submit it, you want that, like, you want like an instant. Yes, I do. An instant thing, right? <laughs> Yeah. When you get like a credit, like there's some credit cards now. It's like you can get instant acceptance and you'll have that credit card like tomorrow. So it's like the second you put all your information in, you click submit, you're approved and ready to go. And that's how people, that's what people want for colleges and such. And other things too, like they want to know like, all right, am I getting in or, or a job offer? You go through the interviews, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're, you're nervous, you're anxious about it. So I think a lot of things in our life around those that we're really, we're waiting for a decision, I guess. That's probably what it is ultimately. Yeah is you're waiting for a decision and you don't know what it is. I think we lack a lot of patience and that drives our anxieties, that drives our nerves, that drives impa impatience in us is not knowing what a certain decision is going to be. Hmm. Yeah, I would say that even just um, being impatient for like the next year of your life. So when you're 15, you can't wait until you're 16 until you can get your permit or 16, can't wait until you're 17 until you can get your license or until you're 18, you can have a little bit more freedom. Um, even just my five-year-old can't wait until he's five because he's <laughs> going to preschool. And uh, I just feel like that's uh, something that I definitely struggled with in high school is just waiting for that next phase of life because I just, I couldn't wait until that next thing I could do at that age. Yeah, so it's almost like a, a discontentment with your current phase, mm -hmm. discontentment with what you're currently in. You're always looking, always looking forward. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting that you talk about that, Shannon, um, because recently... oh. <laughs> recently um my my bible class and i have been looking at the book of ecclesiastes 
And a big theme in that is not being content until we get to the next part. I'll be happy when this. I'll be satisfied when this. I'll be happy when I have this or I can do this, like you were saying, when I'm older. And a lot of what I'm learning from that book is that people are extremely impatient and we think that once we have it or once we got it, then things will be all okay, which is not not yeah. always the truth. <laughs> I mean, if you think about some goal that you had, um, once you actually reach that goal, if you put all of your attention into that goal, once you actually reach it, you never have that full satisfaction that you thought mm. you were going to have once you actually reach the goal, Yep, which is interesting. Yep. Yeah, I can definitely relate to what Shannon was saying because um, I'm a sophomore. So um, I tend to worry about my future a lot and like, you know, what I'm going to do. And I get like really impatient because like I want God to show me like, you know, like where I'm going because like I really have no idea. <laughs> me neither. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Still. But, <laughs> yeah. And then I feel like definitely like things I've been impatient for in the past they've happened but then like I've never like actually realized that because I'm always like thinking about the next thing and like what I want to happen next so like I'm never actually like I never stop and be like you know thank you God for this because I'm just constantly you know thinking and wanting and impatient. Mm -hmm. Christina how do you think when you say like I'm never thanking God for this Mm -hmm. how do you think thanking God and just like looking at the everyday and just looking at the one day at a time can make us I don't want to say like make us more patient people um I feel like well you know um talking to God is always like you know a good option (laughs) but um, (laughs) um you know personally I just feel like I don't do a lot of that and I feel like I need to do that more because um I feel like that could really relieve a lot of um impatience and you know like for everybody not just me that's pretty cool that you said talking to God I feel like you really personalized it a lot of times we could just say I gotta pray more pray more pray Mm -hmm. more which is great you should do Mm -hmm. that but just the fact that you're saying I want to talk to God more it's more like yeah I gotta talk to this person I gotta talk to God for a little bit today and that's pretty cool just kind of the interesting relationship that we have with our creator which is pretty cool yeah so i was looking up a bible verse when you were talking when you were saying with you and i think a lot of us when we don't know where we're going Mm -hmm. and in the story of at the time abram god calls him and this is what it says in genesis 12 because i always remember it and this actually i think has to do with patience it says now the lord said to abram go from your country where he lives where he you know everything he knows is in this country and your kindred, and your father's house, to the land, I will show you. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of cool. Usually we're thinking God's always like, all right, I'm going to take you, put you here, get there, boom, you're good. But he says, to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. So God's talking all like futuristic here, but none of it's like certain. None mm-hmm. of Well, no, that's not certain. It's definitely certain. None mm-hmm. of it is very specific at that moment and he's basically saying you're gonna have to wait for these things to take place none of them are very clear i guess that's the word they're not very clear to abram what they're going to be or where they're going to be but he should have confidence that it's going to take place so i think i always think of that where he says go here and go from here to the land that i will show you Hmm. so there's a lot of patience of all right i'm going somewhere i don't know where but god's going to take me let's just think of think of a a good example of in scripture where we kind of see that uh, unknown but God's, God's going to be with me, yeah. which is kind of at the end of the day, that's what you want the most. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that you say it's the unknown because it's true. We don't know it, but God knows it. Unknown to us. It's unknown to us. So when we're anxious about something, like what Christina said, we should be praying because God knows what's going to happen mm-hmm. and we won't, or we don't know. So if we want to know something and we want to feel more at peace about our impatience, we should be talking to God more because he's the only one who actually does know. Yeah. So good. This is my wife over here. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> hey. She's got some brains. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having Glad me. Glad to have you. <laughs> we should just stay in here for like 
couple hours and talk about it. Our kids are being watched. We're good. Relax <laughs> Speaking a little bit. about impatience. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was kind of ironic Drag that you, this out. Off, or you asked me to be on here and speak about patience. Because I definitely feel like that's the one spiritual gift that I'm lacking. But I feel like that's a lot with our culture. Is that we definitely lack patience because we're so used to the instant gratification. Or we so desire that instant gratification with things. Um, but I realized the reason that I'm most impatient is because I feel like my life, like my desires, I have I have certain desires, but I can't get to them because things are in my way, and yeah. that makes me impatient. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I need to step back and realize. There's things that are placed in, um, there's things that are placed in front of me to prevent me from getting that instant gratification, and God has placed those things in front of me. So it's I need to step back and, see that so that's what i've noticed are those things in front of you bad or are those things in front of you something god wants you to appreciate and enjoy um or both i would say the majority of stuff is things god wants me to step back and appreciate Mm. i don't think from my immediate thoughts that i can think of there's something bad Mm. i think god places things in front of us because he wants us to teach he wants to teach us things yeah. Yeah. In that moment. So like, for example, right, when we go to the beach, we want to relax on the beach, sit, put our feet up and take a nap. We can't do that. We don't even bring chairs to the beach anymore because we know we're <laughs> never going to sit because we have a bunch of kids running around. Or if I do, I'm sitting in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> and piled, pile of sand on us. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe then God's like, hey, this is a season of your life where I want you to enjoy this instead of enjoying that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. When you... um from what you described when you talk about like, oh, there's things that I want to reach in my life, but I can't get there because mm-hmm. I've got to do this first. Would you say that that's like being impatient with yourself in a way? Like mm-hmm. being impatient, how do I describe this best? <laughs> like being impatient with your own track. Yes, it's like my own plans. Like right. I have my own right. plan and God has a plan for me. Right. And I'm impatient because I want this plan, but he might instead of me just going from here to here he might have me go from here to here yeah yeah. and like Mm. yep and then get there yeah it's i'm glad you worded it that way because i struggle with that too i'm always like this is in my way and this is in my way even though i just want to do this (laughs) and that's it's kind of like being impatient with where you are and what today is Mm -hmm. and what i've been learning a lot recently is if if you'd never step back and just look at today and just find joy in today then you're never gonna find joy because Mm. it's only today it's never tomorrow Mm. um Mm. so you worded that really well i relate i think think god places us in seasons specifically to to teach us things in those seasons and we're if we're just trying to wish our way out of them we don't fully appreciate what god has is trying to teach us in that season and I feel like you need this season to be in the next season. Yep. You need what God's teaching you today to be able to um, take on tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It makes me think of a, this is a very, I don't know if it's a corny reference, but my one brother, Noah, is very into F1 racing. Mm. He's trying to get us into F1 racing, <laughs> which you have yet to get into. I've, you I've you watched, refuse it. I've watched some. I, su- I support his... Enthusiasm. Right, yes, he loves F1 racing, car racing, essentially. Do you guys know what F1 racing is or no? No. no okay. Clue. All right. So it's just like, it's really fast cars. They go like 200 miles an hour. It's really popular. There's a show about it. Tim, Tim is mixed on it, right? You're like, you're more to NASCAR, but I don't know how you feel it's, about F1. It's really cool. It's just, I feel like I, I watch Premier League soccer when I can, and I feel like it sometimes interrupts. I'm Yeah, I'm more into NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so when the race is going, they're going like 200 miles an hour. It's a really long track, sharp turns. It's crazy. Oh, gosh. And when there is a crash or something like dangerous, essentially, they have some, they have a car go out onto the track and slow down all the racers and it's called a safety car. So all the people going 200 miles an hour have to slow down and pretty much get behind this person as this person slows them down and they go through the track so they can fix and clear up whatever's there. So I'm thinking as we were talking about the track you're on, you want to get here, you want to get there, you want to go as fast as you can. And up on racing, they throw the safety car out to slow you down for your protection and your safety. Because if you're going 200 miles an hour on a turn and there's a broken car there, you're not going to see it and you're going to smash into it or there's debris everywhere. So I feel like kind of what we're talking about, God at times might want 
to you know change the track you're on or change the the speed you're going like hey slow down think about what you're doing or appreciate the season you're in or hey it's dangerous what you're doing like slow down think about your decisions and all that uh so i just think there are you know it comes to patience i think it's important because i think sometimes it's ultimately for for our good for our safety and and for the way we're living our lives yeah i read a verse the other day and it said something like don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow worries about itself and that just like that really hit me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I read that like the right time I needed to read it. Like, and I feel like that was definitely God like telling me like, it's okay. Like just, you know, I have it under control. Yeah. yeah. What? So how did you come across that verse? Like I was just reading like yeah. <laughs> Matthew 6, just, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Put it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of my favorite verses. I just, you know, there's a few verses in the Bible that I just like hold really close to me. And that one just, I feel like I had to bring it up today because it just, yeah it's so good do you know what like precedes that did you read before that those verses too about like the lily a little and... yeah yeah like the sparrow doesn't worry about tomorrow yeah yeah like if god takes care of the sparrows then he'll take care of you yeah yeah amen so good mm-hmm. all right so we're coming up to the part of our show that people <laughs> if you've been watching you already kind of you know, already know <laughs> start us off felicity <clears throat> hit me with your best shot <laughs> fire away <Yeah. laughs> Awful. It gets worse yeah. and worse. Well. <laughs> Did you guys know about this part from if you've been watching? watching? Yeah, yeah, you knew about the yeah. part. Yeah, you were prepared. All right, so awesome. I, I'm asking a question? Yes. Yep. For Shannon? Yep. All right, good. Well, I have a question. Oh, boy. <laughs> and it lines up with our topic, which we haven't really done before. Okay. Yeah, yeah so we it's a random not question, done that but kind of does with our <laughs> topic. So there are certain people in this world that love Christmas. And there's certain people oh, in this Lord. world that would celebrate and decorate for Christmas all year long. Yep. And my wife here has a lot of impatience for, for decorating for Christmas. Yeah. And I've Aww. lightened up over the years. First you were married, I was like hardcore. No Christmas decorations till after Thanksgiving. Like hard, fast rule. I know lots of people that follow that rule. And each year I've just become more and more loving and just allow her to set up earlier and earlier. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So (laughs) if you had free reign, let's say you had free reign. Free reign. Yes. To set up for decorate or to decorate for Christmas Mm. at any moment, you know, before Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, before Halloween, we can go back earlier. When would you decorate the house, put up the lights outside, inside, Ooh, everywhere. Outside too. outside too. Like you want to let the world know I am ready for Christmas. Okay. What date are you starting this? November 1st. November, November 1st. That's wild. Yeah. Although I did take down a little Christmas tree and we did have Christmas in July and I wanted to keep that tree up, but I didn't because I, I thought I really need to have, well, my birthday is the end of October and then you need to transi- transition into Halloween and then, like, Halloween's done. Like, I am ready for all of the festivities at that point. <laughs> That's actually not bad. I thought you were going to say October, like, September. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> no, no, I was, I was expecting September. a much different answer. That actually is quite tolerable. I was like, no hesitation. That's, <laughs> That's tolerable. We could talk later about, you know, if we want to do that this year. But I mean, I'll start Christmas music earlier. Yeah. The music the music Only if it's a start... Charlie Brown Christmas album. Yeah, well, that's all year round. So the music can start October 1st, I would say. But I would say the decorations. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) The decorations themselves. But specifically outside decorations, I like to be up earlier because I like to drive around when it's nice and dark. And then you get to see the people who really have this, the Christmas spirit. Mm. Oh, now you're getting you know? it ready. Let's ask a retail person about music. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Those who work in retail probably have a much different answer. Those who work in retail hate Christmas. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Those Brutal are... fact. <laughs> Brutal fact. <laughs> Those who work in retail will do anything not to work in December. It is <laughs> So you can celebrate Christmas more. Uh, no. Not in, <laughs> in your own time. They play in the most own... <laughs> in my own time. They play the most outrageous Christmas songs. It is outrageous. That <laughs> like, I, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's outrageous. And the people are pretty outrageous too. But that's all right. I don't want to put myself in a bad mood. <laughs> um yeah, that's awesome. I could not do October first. Michaela used to when we would drive to school together 
my sister is Michaela. She's definitely going to watch know. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we used to drive to school together, she would like push to play Christmas music. And I said, after Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, like I can't do it until after Thanksgiving. And then she would play anyway. Like we were listening to Pentatonix like November 1st. That was like, okay. actually, Whoa. not yet. <laughs> Guilty. I did listen to White Winter Hymnal. No. Just like kind of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Felicity, I have to say, good dun, for dun. you. Good. I am. I was Johnny <laughs> knows this about me. I. I almost I got into like a little fight with one of our uh, he goes to Duke now this guy Michael Keel shout out oh Michael Keel, Michael Keel. <laughs> oh I remember I that. am the biggest Thanksgiving fan yeah. in the world yeah wait Michael Keel loves Thanksgiving no he hated oh. Thanksgiving he, <laughs> so we got into a little a little shouting match about I remember that the uh, the okay. importance of Thanksgiving I knew that there was something yes, with cannot him be skipped over just because you're celebrating Christmas doesn't mean Thanksgiving can't also be thrown in there I just think it deserves its own like special place I agree. Between, it I mean does. it does I mean Halloween's the big one I I it, my opinion doesn't matter but I don't like Halloween decorations Me neither. um but I think yeah. it deserves a little place in between of its own between Halloween and Christmas, and then I'm all in Black Friday. I'm 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 my buddy the elf. What if what if you decorate <laughs> for Christmas? Day, take the Christmas decorations all down the for Thanksgiving, then redecorate for Christmas. That's that's a lot of work. I would do it. Yeah, like we have our tree. I mean, up if you're for willing to do it, I yeah. I would. Yeah, like all the decorations. I'll decorate your apartment. <laughs> I got you. Awesome. All right, next question. You got one or you want me to take one? Um, no, I have one. Right, I have one. I have one. Christina, you are a softball player, right? Yeah. So you must have... A very good softball a player. A very good Freshman softball player. Freshman on varsity, player. just saying. What? <laughs> Wait, I didn't even know that. That's Guys. awesome. She's played for a little bit. Well, I knew that. I didn't <laughs> know about the... Th- yeah. Any colleges <clears throat> listening? Scout. <laughs> this one. Um, yeah. So you must have a pretty banger workout playlist. I actually like don't have one. Really? I actually don't. It's okay. There goes that. <laughs> like, question. Uh, she just she just has her own inner energy. The, yeah, her. I mean, listen. I don't need there's, it. There's there's strength need to that. I listen there's to worship strength music. In the- <laughs> That's same. Really? <laughs> like like the really like wow. you know, praise by um Praise. Yeah. Oh, by yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. I was going to ask you like what is your favorite workout song? Like what do you turn to when you really need to like get hype? But I guess it it's like, Praise yeah, it by like Maverick City. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one time, but I don't really like listen to music. Yeah. Long. Got an inner drive. Or Praise by Elevation. <laughs> I'm to sorry. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Elevation. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. Praise from everyone. Praise from everyone. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So that, good. See, I can't. It has to be like really, really hype. Yeah, my brothers are really the ones that are like all about the like hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be asking them that question later. Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> right, I have a really quick one and then we'll move on. Okay. So, you used to be, I assume you still are, a big Captain America fan. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> are you still? Not really. Ah, uh, you were. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was really. gonna share an embarrassing fact. You know what I will? You had a Captain America mug at some point, I right? I did. I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, really I quick, and then we'll his. move on. Favorite movie with Captain America in it? All the Marvel movies. Which one was like, hey, he did so good in this one? Um, probably the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Yeah, that's a good one. That was a good All right. one. <laughs> Quality answer. All right, I have a Bible verse to segue us back into patience. Romans, so good. Any verse in Romans, but we'll specifically yeah, read Romans. Romans in chapter 12 says this. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. So we talked a lot about patience in a lot of different areas of life, uncertainty, unknown for the next phase. What we haven't talked about patience yet is in tribulation. So the challenging times, the hard times. So very aware of what is going on. We know what's happening. Patience in that. How do we get through? Because we definitely have a lot of people. I mean, I, I met with some guys today and we we're just, share, you know, we're catching up over the summer, sharing life. And man, each thing was just, oh, I mean, medical issues, death, um, persecution, like everyone sharing around the room was just going through some very hard hardships in life. So Patience in those tribulations, in those trials. I think that's a really important topic within patience. What yeah. do you think? Yeah. So when you say patience in trials, are we patient for it to end? Are we patient for it to get better? Like, what, what do you think patience is within that? 
I think it would probably change who you ask. Mm. Each person probably has a different answer. Mm. I actually read a devotion on patience this morning, and um, I thought it was interesting. It says when they talk about patience in the Bible, like during tribulation, um, it's not patience in a passive tense, but it's like an active patience. Hmm. So you're actively being patient and actively searching and listening to God patiently for him to um, walk through it with you. It's not that you're just sitting yeah. there and waiting. You're, yeah. How, yeah. what is active patience? Like if you, if you were to word it in. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> like well, how do I have active patience? Um, I would say constantly just listening to God and seeking, uh, seeking his direction. And that could be, you know, being patient doesn't mean just sitting in a corner and staring and waiting until you can count to a hundred. Yeah. You know, it's, it's actively going out and, um, doing what God or walking through the tribulation that God is walking with you through. You know, Mm -hmm. you're not just sitting there and having him drag you along. You know, he's walking with you. Yeah. That's a, that's a good comparison. Either you're just like, God is just kind of, come on, come on, like, let's go. And you're doing every step is like, oh, fine. Or it's actually walking beside him and just saying, okay, I'll just, I'll have a better attitude about this. I'll just go where you want me to go. You go first, I'll follow right behind you. That's Mm. a really good comparison of those two things. Mm. I think active patience is a control issue. Mm. So I think if you want active patience in your life, you have to know, I think what you're capable of doing and you do those things and then you have to know what God is capable of doing and let him do those things. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the middle of a a trial or a tribulation of uh, of a season, like you can only do so much and you can only do certain things, but do those things, you know, do those things you're capable of doing within that and just be patient that God will give you the endurance to get through that and just seeking his face, seeking him and just let, you know, do what you can do and let God do the rest essentially giving up control Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i definitely feel god throughout my day like come on like almost there like um if something happens or like i have to be patient um and then i'm like okay like it's over it's not over (laughs) 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 like i got a lot of brothers so it's it's definitely i need to work on my patience a little more (laughs) (laughs) also just like homework is definitely a big thing like big tests and a bunch of homework at the end of the day and then you know but god's always there even if you don't see it or feel it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that just reminded me of um i think it's ezekiel maybe he's um trying to help out his the nation and he goes under a tree and he sits under a tree and he's like that's it i give up i'm done like Mm -hmm. i don't want to do this anymore and um angels come and feed Mm -hmm. him and minister to him and that also happens to Jesus when he's is it when he's tempted. A, yeah, when he's yeah, tempted. The desert. But, yeah, and then angels, angels come came. and minister to him. Um, and the purpose of angels is to minister to us. Like it, it has examples of that all over the Bible. Um, it's just, I think there's going to be lots of seasons in our um, impatience that we're going to need to be ministered to. Mm-hmm. And we're going to need to, we're going to struggle, but just to have the constant <clears throat> reminder that, you know, mm. Yeah, definitely. God's with us and he's going to carry us through when we need yeah. it. That's a really cool angle to take on that. How do you, how do you think, um, like, in 2023, angels can come and be there and comfort us? Like, how do you think that takes place? Do you think that happens today? Like, I think anything can happen. Like, God's the same God as he was in the Old Testament yeah. as he is mm-hmm. now. Um they may appear differently, but, you know, he may send specific people to reach yeah. out to you and say, like, hey, you were on my mind. Um, yeah. Or, yeah, just send you a, a verse to think about or something. And, yeah, I'm sure there's lots of different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I think we can, maybe our eyes need to be open to angels working through what how other people have really spoken to us. Mm-hmm the Bible verses that other people have shared with us at the right time, like sitting in the pew in church and being like, that sermon is actually what I really, really needed. Mm. Uh, That's actually, that's a cool perspective on that. I've never heard that angle before. Mm. 
All right, so I have something to wrap us up with as we're kind of closing out here. And we're going through Ezra and Nehemiah in our uh, church services on Sundays. And it's a part of their Israelites' history where they were just out, they just got out of the 70 year uh, exile they had in Babylon. And what happened before was prophecy through Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah, they say, you, you will be in exile, you'll be in, kept, uh, you know, in, in Babylon for 70 years. But then the verses after that are the really famous verses that says, therefore, I know the plans I have for you. And this is where you're going to go, but I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to bring you back home. A lot of times you don't know the trials or tribulation, how long they're going to last. Mm-hmm. Probably a good thing. All right. But there actually was specific 70 years. You're going to be here. So imagine if you had a time frame on like your, your, your trial. Again, we, we normally don't, but I want to read some verses that says no matter how long that is, whether it's a month, whether it's a whole school year, whether it's all of high school, whether it's until you leave this job, whatever it is, uh, this is what Scripture tells us in Second Corinthians. It says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. So I think that's just such an encouragement that regardless of how long your trial is, your tribulation, be patient knowing that you will never be crushed. You will never be driven to despair. You will never be forsaken or struck down. You may be, you know, you may be afflicted a little bit. You may be perplexed. You might be persecuted. It might be challenging, but I will never let you get wiped out. Yeah. And we see that in, with the Israelites history. God never wiped them out. He always was faithful to his people. And I think for today, for us, we just have to be patient in that tribulation, knowing that God is never going to forsake us, but he will always be faithful in carrying us through, regardless how long it is, because that's not what really matters is how long it is. What really matters is knowing that God's going to carry us through. Yeah, I feel like a verse that kind of goes along with that is Romans 8, 25. It says, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hmm. Yeah. Very good. And rarely do we see. Yeah. (laughs) Mostly never. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. I'd say the biggest comfort in patience is just knowing that you're not going to be at it alone, knowing that God's going to walk with you through it. Yeah. Mm. It's never going to end poorly. Like, <coughs> I'll, I'll, sorry, one last thought, and then we can close out. <laughs> but Ezra and Nehemiah begins, doesn't it begin with them coming back? Like, they're yes. coming back. Yeah, yeah, they're coming back to, to, they're coming back home. to their home. So we see that although like you said like they were 70 years away from home it was 70 years of exile the lord has still brought them back like whatever season you're in whatever you're going through whatever you need more patience with in your life you can trust that the lord is going to bring you back home like Mm -hmm. it doesn't end here Mm -hmm. yes patience is hard and i i struggle with patience too but there's there's hope in the idea that you know god isn't going to leave you there he's going to walk you through and yeah he'll bring you back home yeah my mom always says that like you know god didn't take you this far just to leave you He's yeah gonna yeah keep you with him the whole way amen yeah there's a song about that so yeah. good mm-hmm. <laughs> well thank you <laughs> guests christina shannon for coming on the show yeah been fun hey if you're watching this fresh wave podcast subscribe subscribe yes. to the channel <laughs> watch our other our other episodes yes. hit that like button <laughs> hit that like button the notification share bell it. <laughs> share it on your feed uh yeah. this has been really fun we've been enjoying it we know some of you guys have been enjoying listening so glad to keep yeah. making these and have some people come on and share what's on their heart see what god's been doing it's been yeah. fun yep awesome Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Felicity's telling goodbye. I think that means we're done. <laughs>